pretty fantastic. It's just in general, they're playing so safe and they're sitting back on defense. Rogue is left with nothing. They, they don't know what to do. They can't clear it out. They can't push it through. If they clear it all the way, they just have someone waiting. And if they want to do it slow, well, they're down by three goals. They have to be quicker than that. Ooh, Matt, going to try and double tap it in, but can't get it underneath the crossbar. Now down by four. Rogue needs to go back to the drawing board, rethink what they're doing, and try to find some semblance of offense. A goal here at the end would help, you know, create a morale boost moving forward, but I don't think they're going to win this game as it has been all the NRG show. The ball spinning time in the orange half. They're up here near the midfield line. No insolence is to win out the touch and Matt to try and play it through. Sis now across and insolence is to try and play it across again. This one going all the length of the field. That'll be some of the, as, as, uh, as Lawler was saying, as this help instead, help pad the uh, fantasy stats here. Yeah, this, this was just a. You have to commit for these. You have to when you're what, four goals down, 30 seconds left. What do you have left to do? You might as well, if, if a pinch or something crazy is unfortunate for you, I mean, you were already in a tight spot, now you're just in a slightly tighter spot. Yeah, you know, barely. Yeah, it's, it's you, you were already going to be losing the situation. Might as well try to commit on the off. Oh, there comes another one. Firebird. These are pretty. It's just yeah, the game's over. Just might as well stack up some more. Got a nice voice crack in there, too. Ooh. Oh, yeah. So, NRG. Once they had that lead, they really kind of took their foot a little bit off. But it's essentially, they went from like fourth gear to third gear, right? Mm -hmm. They still had their foot on the pedal. And they were still, you know, contesting because you never want to give your opponents all the space in the world because then they will totally outplay you. But in general, they were they pulled back a bit. They left somebody all the way back because last thing you want to do is give up something silly to a pinch or a situation that's very, very hard to read. And then it left Rogue with how many situations, right? Then they had to carry it out slow. Mm -hmm. And then someone's always there to bully it. You give a hard clear, you're just giving it up again. So they were putting them in a much uh, more critical situation where they had to think a lot harder and they had to think a lot more on their toes and they weren't able to just get a hard clear and then try and decide after. They had to get a hard clear and be like, okay, who's clearing it and where? How do we position this to try and at least counter the clear and counter counter clear? Whatever happens clear, clear, here when clear. it gets ping pongy. Yeah, I felt like this game was not as much of, you know, rogue defensive mistakes as it was just offensive prowess from NRG. 16 shots, though. Yeah. To two. Yeah, that's a lot of offense. <laughs> that's so much offense there. 16 shots in one game. It's gross. My goodness. It's yeah. real gross. If you got Jacob on your, on your fantasy team there, eight shots, a save, an assist, and two goals. Definitely racking up lots of points. Yeah. And uh, like I said, they really just made made Rogue feel like they had no control. Mm. Rogue, they tried to cut off as many options as possible because generally when you're clearing on defense, you have a couple options. You'll either pass it to a teammate and then do some short ball or small ball, uh, plays out to try and bring it out to your opponent's half, gain a little bit of control, then play midfield, or you'll just smack it out, see how they read it. If you can find an empty spot in the pitch that's over on their half, then you can all kind of, you know, pull up the midfield together and then start playing the midfield game. Or uh, there's a couple other more unique options, but if all those are cut, if there's somebody contesting you and there's somebody back, which mm -hmm. NRG was doing well, they were trying to play much smarter. They were much more conscious of each other. And I think that's where Rogue just really struggled to get anything in their favor. Are there any players in particular on the pitch right now that you look at that you think need to be stepping up in a way, you know, especially from the side of Rogue after a 6-0 loss? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's really a player that steps up, but I think as a whole they really need to try and designate Insolence as some sort of role mm. or at least understand when he's coming up because there still are just a handful each game of times where we watch Insol with another player, whether it be Sis or Matt, and I don't know if it's because Sis or Matt aren't letting him come in or if it's because Insol's trying to come in when he shouldn't. But I feel like at this point, especially coming into, you know, week number two, you want to make sure that you're getting that out of the way as early as possible. Jacob nearly able to drop this one in and underneath after demolishing the goalie, opening up a shooting lane for Fireburner. Jacob now to right up the wall here. Firebrenner will look for Jacob upfield. Garrett for Jacob once more. Jacob's just been sitting in this one roll for like 20 seconds straight, not rotating at all. Finally, he'll fall back and allow Fireburner and Garrett G to move up. Come in as the three, take it a shot towards the net, blocked away by Insolences into the corner, but it's nice and lofty. Garrett will have a nice read to drop it down. Oh, and it goes in underneath <laughs> all by himself. What a way to start it. Yeah. And I, I know I saw a couple of comments out there after that last game of no one had really seen Garrett play as weakly as he had in the previous series, and weakly, I mean, W-E-A-K, yes, L-Y. Yeah. But it seems that he's bounced <laughs> back very quickly. He didn't let it really 
bring him down. I think, you know, the, the mentality of NRG has always been in their favor. They really don't get tilted, even if they have rough games, rough losses. They still understand their skill, and they're still confident no matter which series they're going in. Well, Rogue needs to be taking advantage of every opportunity they can get. And one thing they continuously have been doing is going for the cheat-up kickoff, but they generally are losing these kickoffs. Insolence is with a shot towards the net, the double tap underneath. Garrett got the block, but it didn't matter, and Insol gets them on the board. At this point, he just wanted to follow through and try and stuff out any save that was coming his way. You saw him all the way trying to follow that right behind. Garrett had no choice but to put it into the crossbar. He was hoping for probably a bit more of a pinch. He really had no options but that. He couldn't get up in time. And unbelievably, Insolence will get a dunk. And that is a tie game here in game number two. NRG winning the first game, completely shutting out Rogue. And here in the first half, we see Rogue on the board in game two. We will look to tie up the series. A Matt shot going wide, but the Insolence's follow-up will give Rogue the lead. 3.30 left to go. And the moment they have room to breathe, you see Garrett too long to contest that. He couldn't get there before Matt, and Matt just smacked it across the net. He nearly had an angle on that shot, but Insolence is waiting for the pass, waiting for the shot or the save clear. Either way, he was in a great position to just try and attack the ball no matter what came out of that, and it gave him a nice hard cut. Garrett trying to win that one. Insolence now to carry it onto the backboard. Sizz lurking in the midfield. I'll move up to keep the offensive pressure going, but can't even get it back into the box, and Garrett G will win the 50-50 with Matt straight out over the top. Sends the shot towards the net. Insel has to play it onto the backboard, and Fireburner's airborne. Matt's there first, and he'll play it over the side, but Jacob keeps the pressure on, shooting towards the net. The clear is soft, but Insel's got a second touch wow. to put it over Fireburner. And now all the way back down the field, there's Garrett G in the corner that he got. And Fireburner in the back will be able to play it away. Teams flying up and down the field. Much better ball game than in game number one. With 2.48 left to go, it's the 1-0 lead for Rogue. Green Soul is in a shot towards the net. Garrett will save. Sizz cross field, Insel back to Sizz. Jacob will block this one. And send it out, Sizz now the pass off the wall. Matt's airborne passes back towards Sizz, but gets bumped. He will not be able to keep the pass plays going. And now Garrett G off to the races through the middle. Jacob looks for the bump on Insel, but he'll get the damage done and send it to the corner. Fireburner now into the box. Jacob's right there, pushes it through, muscles it straight in, and we got a tie game. And it looked like Rogue now is trying, finally starting to spread out. Insolence is seeming to not bump into many players anymore, but there it is, just getting beat by Jacob. He went for the side flip just a bit too early, so his car was too far off the ground. He didn't cut off the angles to the goal. He was too busy worried about the shot outwards and trying to clear it, but he just mistouched that, and Jacob will sneak it under. Says Cheats up significantly less deep and is able to win out the touch. Something that feels like they've been doing consistently. Fireburner in the air with an open net in front of him, drops this one straight through. Nobody rotated back after the initial kickoff push, and it'll be Fireburner who gets the lead back to NRG. This is still a pretty difficult shot to make as smoothly <laughs> yeah. as he did. It was directly on target. If he put that too slowly and had a bounce, it definitely would have gotten saved as there were two people from Rogue coming in from both angles, one on top and one on the bottom. So he shoots it perfectly in the middle. Two minutes remaining here in game two. And only a one goal difference. Five goals scored so far in this game. Fireburner misses the clear, but Jacob will put it off to the side and it brings Insel in. Now Jacob to the corner. Matt to pass this one out. Fireburner will pick it up and send it onto the backboard. Garrett G airborne to sit try. Create another opportunity. This one pushed away. Fireburner and Jacob both up, but Jacob immediately falls down into goal to eliminate the problem created by the double commit. Jacob sets this one high, he'll look for the goalie. He's got three people in front of him, bumps two of them into the corner alongside, and then Insel does not make the touch he needs, and Sizz has to play it up. Insel gets bumped onto the wall pretty heavily there by Garrett G, and Jacob will be able to pick up that touch, bounce it around the corner. Fireburner's looking for the moment of opportunity to strike, nearly has the pace to get there in time. And this one will go away. And Sizz both airborne, looking for Insel. And with the final minute of game two upon us here, it's still the one goal lead for NRG. Fireburner to play it over to the side. Jacob moving up, Fireburner hanging out in the orange. He'll move back as Garrett will look to buy time. Jacob across, just playing keep away from Rogue. Don't allow them to have any shooting opportunities. Fireburner shoots it back down the field. 35 seconds remaining, still the one goal advantage. Rogue needs to be able to get this one into the blue box. They want to have overtime. 
not be set on match point. A win right now from NRG would put them up two in the series. So we'll let this one wrap around. Garrett G in the corner. 15 seconds remaining. Jacob pitches this one through and Insult now with an opportunity to do it all by himself. Up onto the backboard. He's got Matt in support. Nearly had an opportunity, but just could not get the motion inwards. And as the final countdown happens, it's Jacob with ball control over here on the side. It touches Garrett. We'll just let it fall underneath on the fake. NRG after dropping early here in game number two, bounce back and now Games one and two under their belt. They just need one more to get the victory over Rogue. And you'll notice the moment that NRG was up by one goal, there's the change in mentality in their positioning. Someone was always dropping back. The moment they saw, the moment they knew, they just felt it. Someone else needs to come up for this. This ball's floated in midfield. I know one of my teammates is going to be here, so what do I do? I'm going to drop all the way back. I'm going to pick up some boost. We don't have to worry about attack. Mm -hmm. We've got the victory under our belt so long as we don't let any more in. And you saw there at the end, though, Insolence has had the solo play. When you get that much space, that's when you really have to worry about solo plays. It's when yeah. one person will be able to beat someone to the ball because you're giving him space because you're dropping back too much. Mm -hmm. And that's where the risk comes into play. But, you know, luckily for NRG, Rogue weren't able to capitalize on that. They weren't expecting insults to pinch it across. I think Matt was underneath him, mm -hmm. ready for some sort of maybe gentle pass downwards. That could have been threatening for NRG. So I think the space they need to be worried about if Rogue can pick it up quick enough then they'll be able to beat them on the solo plays. And they need to be watching out for Insul in particular right now, scoring both the goals here for Rogue. And it's a fantastic solo play there at the beginning to double tap, mm -hmm. to dunk Garrett right in front of his own net. And uh, one thing I, I started to refer to a few times there in the series, I felt like uh, watching the series last week against Cloud9 and then watching them play here as well, they like to go, Rogue likes to go for the cheat up kickoff, to send mm -hmm. one person up close, but they generally lose that kickoff they they will they'll the first touch is fine but then they aren't able to make a meaningful contact or make anything happen with that player who's doing the cheating up and we saw there towards the end sis starting to back off a little bit more not cheat up as hard you can see there matt giving a little bit more space but even with the cheat up he's still going to kind of lose this out jacob right off the bat taking a shot insult will save it away might be a time to start looking for a different type of kickoff not give nrg that advantage every time i mean to speak on kickoffs nrg are one of the few teams that actually go two players for boost mm. Most teams will send at least one player for the cheat just so that you don't have to deal with someone having full control in the midfield and then one person back for boost. But NRG seems to like to go two for boost so they can get a really quick opportunity early on. And then that means they trust their 1v1 chances at being able to stop anyone in midfield. We'll see Rogue moving this one back into the blue. After dropping games one and two, they're going to have to win three straight. They've already done it once today. Can they do it again? be quite the tall order. I don't think we've ever had two reverse sweeps in one day. Jacob send that one out towards Fireburner. And he'll send it back to Jacob. It's demolished in enemy corner, but Fireburner and Garrett G can just be a bit more aggressive knowing Jacob's on that back line. Garrett G to try and drop this one in. Matt's there and sends it away, but the shot was on target from Garrett G. Excellent placement and work on the offense from Fireburner and Garrett G. And now they've watched the defense scramble. NRG's just trying their best to body as much as they can midfield so that they can't let them spread out and get to that boost again. Garrett G gets played past by Insul. Jacob in the corner, Insul sets it up high. Sis Airborne tries to get it underneath Fireburner, but he's got the save, sends it away, and gets another touch over the top of Matt. Insul has to play it over to the side, but now Jacob, he could possibly do this all by himself. Fireburner gets flicked over. Garrett G able to play it up. Sizzle will send this one high. Jacob will look, send it back down to his teammates, but three men rotating in the corner for NRG right now. Well, space all the way back out. Jacob looking to do this by himself. Sizz over to Matt. Shot towards net, blocked by Garrett G. There's just Fireburner in the back right now. He'll move up in the one position. Over the top of him, Jacob comes through to splay it away. Right now, the long ball game from Rogue. Constantly lofting, taking shots from midfield, trying to draw out more and more defenders, see if they can create an opportunity. Fireburner nearly gets that bump on Insolences, which would have been a goal for NRG. But this time, back down the field, Jacob into the middle. Fireburner waits, respecting the positioning from Matt and Sizz. I'll leave this one in the late Garrett G play it towards the net. And then so we'll pass it back down towards Sizz. Sizz not really in the best position. Fireburner will be able to make the most of this one. Now Insul picking it up off the bounce off the ceiling. Jacob to play it back down. 2.18 left to go. Scoreless here as we've crossed halftime. The series has been pretty offensive. It's been a pretty defensive game. I still do always think that Rogue is one of the teams that looks for each other the most. 
even on defense, they have a lot of small touches to each other. They, I think they realize a lot of times there's really no point in clearing this because it's not going to get as much. So let's at least give it to each other. But Energy's physical play so far in the latter half of this game has been insane. Again, another attempt at the bump from Jacob. All their counterattacks, they send somebody cheating, not for the pass, but for the bump. It looked like Jacob got the demolition on the mat and then went to the corner looking to see if he could get him again. Didn't work out for him, but how tilting would that be? Get spawn camped in Rocket League. <laughs> Sends this one in the middle. Garrett's going to look to take advantage of it. Puts it on the back more. Can he double tap it in? He misses the second touch, but Fireburner's there on a confused defense. Insel will ground and drive it out right off that touch. Oh, look at that. Jacob all the way back again for the clear. Send that one back away. A beautiful play there by Insel after being having their defense run amok by Garrett G. Fireburner's shot is slapped away. One minute and 10 seconds. Nobody scored here in game three. Ben RG can just get one goal in. We'll take the victory. This ball outpacing the energy roster. Sis sends it up to the side, but Jacob's there to try and drop it down. Fireburner watching the touch from Matt. He'll fall back now as Insel plays it over to the side. Jacob's lurking in enemy territory, just waiting for a mistake that he can punish. One mistake is the ball game is the match here for Rogue. Garrett G and Jacob all kind of tangled up with the breakaway. Can he find Garrett in the midfield? No defenders there, but he takes his time, does not want to give up this opportunity, and it does give enough time for Sizz to get there. Fireburner underneath Sizz. 33 seconds remaining. We're still scoreless. Nobody can find it in regulation. We go to overtime, and Insul sends a shot towards the net. Garrett misses, and Insul and Sizz has got a goal in here. Rogue might just stay alive in game three. They really have been spreading out. Sizz to the backboard. Insul just going for it. I thought he was, just for a shot. I think Garrett either came, up, came off the post or hit Jacob. Something messed him up to where he was trying to side flip his way across the net. And Insulin says, we'll sneak that in. I don't think it cares how. Oh, oh my no. goodness. You talked about earlier the style of kickoffs are going for Booz. Actually, and, and I think NRG actually sends a cheat up here. Garrett and Jacob both go. This just works out so not in their favor. Fireburner in the corner for Booz. Nobody in net can't get there in time. And just like that, Rogues basically secured game three. 25 seconds left, NRG, while they might have two games up right now, have quite the hill for the rest of this game. Yeah, they're gonna have to score immediately here. And losing that one to Matt right there probably just completely seals it up. As the clock counts down, NRG will look to have to look to game four to win. <laughs> they almost, they almost, making us eat our words, sending the shot there towards the end. Blocked away by Matt. And this ball will stay on the ground at the end here. Rogue winning game three. Not done just yet. Game four inbound. NRG's going to have to win one more. Have to try and have, have one other shot to clinch this out. Yeah, zero to zero until about 30 seconds left. And it was mm -hmm. a 32 second mark. We saw Insolences get his first goal and then a delayed kickoff will give him the second goal just seconds after that. NRG really, they put up an okay amount of shots, six shots, which really wasn't a lot for them considering how much they'd put up earlier. But they do seem to be playing safe. I don't know if it's a little bit too safe, mm -hmm. especially when you're at a risk of you don't want to let any goals in. Sometimes you space out too much, and NRG's general gameplay uh, relies on them being able to go up. And they were doing a lot of bumping, though. Instead of somebody cheating up for the pass, they were just like, I'm just going to go bump. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Jacob was just smacking people left and right. A lot of them didn't register as demolitions, so you might not have seen it on the screen, but there were a lot of either attempts or actual bumps that did happen on the defense. Yeah, for sure. And you see the six shots you talked about from NRG, five saves from Rogue. So mm -hmm. a, a well-defended ball game here by Rogue, but also just not necessarily the most deadly offensive You know, shots from NRG. They were easily blocked. Stuff. You saw the, the moment where I think it was Garrett G up on the backboard, like double-tapping a ball down three defenders up or two defenders up and one kind mm -hmm. of out of net and as as fireburner comes in for the the rebound shot it just he shoots it straight dead center and it's blocked away by insole who had to make quite the play to get there but still shooting it upper 90 or something that would have just more enabled nrg to stay alive in this game as they would have had that first goal and now in game four they've got to do it again after being robbed earlier in the day by ghosts taking that series away from them a series that every in everybody's mind was NRG's. All they had to do was just take it. It was Ghost who came came up with the win and with the better play in that series. Now NRG to try and do it against Rogue. One game away. The Rogue's been here before, just earlier today. NRG to play it over the top of Sizz. Goes high. And so this misses. He'll just let that one just sail on past. 
Fire it's just a viewing corner. party. Just a viewing party. Just want to check the ball out real I just quick. want to get up real close to it. Mm. Yeah. Good looking mm. ball you got yeah, here. Yeah, that looks real great. But this is a museum, mm. right? I can't touch it. Okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> Sizz up in the corner. He'll try to pinch this one down. Difficult read, but Jacob will get a soft touch away. And Rogue has had the majority of offense so far in the first minute of the game. Garrett will play it over the top of Sizz. Well, Matt will play it back towards his teammate. Three players commit on the defense, but no one in a good position to shoot from NRG as they pieced out for some boost. Fireburner will look to send it towards Jacob and Garrett G. But Matt will follow this one through. And Garrett G wins the 50-50 up on the vertices. Garrett to try and send this one out towards Jacob. Gets bumped by Matt. This opens up space for Rogue. Matt to play it down to the corner. Fireburner on the backboard. Plays it back towards Matt, but he'll continue to look for Sizz, who goes airborne to try and play it over the last defenders here. Insel cannot get it through Garrett G, and it'll go away. 325 left to go. Still scoreless in game four. Great counterattack for Rogue. Matt, the moment he knew that Fireburner was going to beat him on that backboard, he just waited for Fiber to touch, so he went to the sidewall instead, waited for the hit, and I let him continue that aggress. Sizz into the corner. Jacob looking to demo Sizz. Not finding anything. Fireburner now up on the wall with Garrett G in net. Garrett G able to avoid the demolition from Rogue. Insul was looking for him. Now Sizz looks for the bump, finds it on Garrett. Poor Garrett just not being left alone in net, but while they're thinking about Garrett in net, Jacob and Fireburner have been able to move it up the field Unable to make a shot happen. Garrett in the back again. Says once again hunting down Garrett. He has just been. He, there's a bounty on his head here, but he's actually going to get a breakaway opportunity. Insul it says plays it to the side, winning the drag race. And as we approach halftime, still scoreless in what has become a very defensive series. Yeah, NRG one goal away from taking the series, so they make sure they don't want to give it up, give them a chance at a reverse sweep. Oh, that actually could have been a nice shot by Insul and had he had the power on it. He just needed to have the angle towards the net, too. Didn't look like anybody was in a great position to block. But Garrett will find Jacob from the corner. He'll loft this one. And Insul is not going to be able to make a solid clear. He'll need Sizz to help him out. And Fireburner wraps this one in front of the net. Jacob's right there, but cannot send it towards the goal. Garrett in finally puts it through, and it's NRG with the lead. Jacob knowing he didn't have the angle, that's, I mean, he could have tried, but there's no way. That angle was so unbelievably tight. So instead he goes for a gentle pinch, more of like a, I don't know what to call that, like a double bounce, like a bruh. It just hits between his car and the wall. If it was a hard pinch, it would have gone nuts. A slap back, a slap back. <laughs> I don't know if there's actually a term for it now that I think about it. But he wanted to be more gentle and that was it. That was the selfless play to give it to a teammate. Garrett G with a nice slap back off the backboard. I like that one. The slap back. For all you guitar players out there, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's not. Ex it, it's yeah. We'll Whatever. do a poll. We'll do it. We'll do a Twitter poll. To figure <laughs> out what we're gonna name that. Make sure to vote oh, in the oh, chat. Oh, Sizz oh. gonna look for the shot. Matt got the demolition onto Jacob, but the shot was just wide, and they will stay at a one-goal deficit here, unable to tie it up. But they got one minute, thirty seconds left to work with here. Plenty of time to come back into this. Sizz and Insolence is passing down towards Matt. Shot is wide, and Garrett G will play it off the backboard and away. Insul turns around at the midfield. The Fireburner will be able to pick it up with the read. Sizz now back towards Insul. Shot inside. Jacob onto the backboard. Garrett G up. Unable to make contact. Fireburner into the corner again. NRG putting on lots of pressure right now. They need to be mindful of defensive positioning. Do not want to fall prey to a breakaway right now. And it remaining. This is to try and carry it. Fireburner's there, and Garrett G with the follow-up in the air, carrying it towards the net. Can he double tap this one down? Insolence is to drop it down, nearly scores the own goal, but it goes off to the side. And Matt will need to play this one. He needs to find Sizz over on the side wall, but Fireburner's got a great position to intercept. This one is rolling all the way. Can they go through? Fireburner's right there, and he'll put it through. And with 39 seconds remaining, NRG is looking like they're going to clinch it up. That Matt passed to Sizz, and then Insult went for the corner boost, but it wasn't there. It just spawned. Oh. As he got back to net, it was spawning. He was hoping to sneak it, sneak a little corner boost in, but it ended <laughs> up being the disaster for that play. 39 seconds left, and NRG two up, looking to take the series. They can just hold on to this score line. They will do so, but oh, an open net right in front of there. Sizzle put it through with 32 seconds remaining. Same place we saw them score in game three. Can they score a second one here, Carpet? Matt getting a demolition off of kickoff, I think, was key for that as well. Really staggering that defensive rotation. On kickoff, teams are almost already in a tiny bit of a panic, but when you take one off the pitch and everyone's struggling for boost, it was a great chance for them to get an early goal on the kickoff. So like NRG might have gone for a fake kickoff. Right now they do have ball control in rogue territory. 
Sizz to drop this to map. Pass back towards Sizz. Gets the 50-50, the second touch there off of Fireburner. But Jacob able to win it out in the corner, slowing this one down, going for the solo plays himself. He's just buying time. Yeah, just make it take as long as possible. Matt to Sizz, the shot towards the net. Can anybody get up in time? Insul bluffs it a oh. bit, but Matt just can't turn around in time to get towards it, and the ball will touch. NRG in four games, taking the victory over Rogue. Rogue almost getting that last zero-second play, but they were all just a bit too far up when they came off the backboard. But they did have an open opportunity at that. They played well against NRG. I, I really think Rogue is still, you know, finding their place right now with their new roster. Mm -hmm. Matt and Sizz, yes, they know well together, but I think Insolence is, is still trying to find how to fit his puzzle piece in with the remainder of the team. But NRG, got to give it up to Jacob's tweet. It seems like they had great mentality coming into this. They were just playing strong and safe, much safer than it seemed like usual. They were dropping back when they needed, but I really did like seeing the physical play out of them. Yeah, no, NRG looking great there. I think I think Insul has, like we said, we, we want him to find his, his role in the offense of Rogue here, but he was basically on the top of the board for Rogue the entire series, putting in the vast majority of their goals you see here at the end, even when they didn't score, still at the top of the scoreboard for Rogue there. So doing a lot of work, just got to make it fit in with the rest of the roster there, but they've got a whole season to figure it out here. Great games there from NRG and Rogue. I'm going to send it back over to the desk. Nice result there from NRG, taking a 3-1 victory over Rogue, a matchup that uh, pitting the top two teams from North America region from last season, this season, and NRG playing incredibly well. Let's take a look at the Mobile One high performance replay there uh, as, again, NRG able to get another win under their belt and bouncing back. So Jacob tweeted, he's like, we're going to do it, and they did it. Now, if only they could put together two strong showings in a week, then NRG would be all set 4-0, but 3-1's not half bad, Lawler Rogue. Uh, they looked outclassed in game one for sure, 16 shots to two, and then they slowly got into this game and they made it closer, but some of these solo plays from Energy were just too much. Yeah, it just seems like the entire time Rogue was playing catch up. Energy, obviously, the number one for a reason over this team, but a lot of solo and individual plays. I mean, you saw Garrett with two back to back. Like, people were asking, yo, he hasn't been looking like Garrett. Uh, well, he shut us all up again because that's what Garrett does. He's nuts. He's still Garrett G. And then Jacob, the one off the ceiling. Fireburner with a great drop shot here. They were making the plays when they needed to. And Rogue, they had a chance in game four. Says just barely missing that last shot with like three seconds to go. Uh, Faceoffs were a little weird. We saw one goal from Rogue that was just clearly off faceoff. But then also, uh, Energy winning a lot of faceoffs, and I think that's one thing when people look back. Like if you're gonna watch tape of a team, faceoffs is the easiest things to watch and then try and counter. And I've talked about Jacob's faceoffs before and how good they are, and like they're, they, they are counterable. So I'm surprised more teams haven't been trying to like look at how certain players do faceoffs and try and counter them there. Yeah, Insolence has been able to figure it out. I think that was game three where mm -hmm. able to score right after that uh, that first goal in quick succession going up 2-0. Um, more on that point, though, as far as how low scoring we saw that series, and it felt like maybe a little bit defensive. Uh, at the very least, it seemed like both these teams had a tremendous amount of respect for each other. Uh, how would you guys explain that as far as just how low scoring those games were? So if it's low scoring, then Energy is probably going to win the series. That's how they want to play these series. They seem to win 2-1, 1-0 all the time. Rogue, on the other hand, have been more of a high scoring team lately where they want more action so then Sizz can get pumped up, pump up the rest of the team with Insul and Matt there. But if it is low scoring, I expect Energy to take it. Yeah, uh, Energy likes to really take advantage of their opportunities and they don't care how few that is. As mm -hmm. long as they get a couple, they'll make sure they're count. They're very accurate. They're very precise with their decisions. On the other hand, Rogue is very momentum based and you mentioned it with Sizz. If they can put in a bunch of shots, it doesn't matter if the other team's scoring as well. As long as they keep that, that upbeat feeling of, hey, we scored a goal. Hey, we had a team pass play they benefit from it. So um, Energy has always been a team that's done a good job of shutting that down while Rogue tries to open it up. So uh, it's been back and forth, but you got to give it to Energy, their defense yet again, able to control it on the offensive side of the play. Yeah, plus they shut down Matt completely. He yeah. only had one assist, or I'm sorry, two assists in the series, no goals. And when you can shut down the runner-up for MVP of last season, that's, that's doing a good job. Yeah, and uh, Rogue and Energy are done for the day for the, the broadcast, both finishing uh, this week one and one. And we got some tweets hot off the press from Garrett G 34 two minutes ago. 
you said that's how you bounce back. Three to one at the end of week two. Still have lots to work on. Gigi's going where G uh, Gigi's rogue. Good. Um, he needs to give himself more credit. Well, yeah. I like, mean, based on that, time, he's like, I just played out of my mind. But I not mean, good enough. I love but that, it is though. good when you're at yeah. the top that you can still pick apart your own play because that's what you need to do. So one to improve against Europe as well. Right. Yeah. Well, let's answer that question. Still have lots to work on. Well, what do you think Garrett's talking about for energy? I still have seen some weird defensive plays. I felt like uh, this series they were challenging better. Like they'll send the one guy from the goal line up right. quicker than when the other guy is trying to cycle back so they are a fix in that there is some place where we talk about they get less opportunities if they can create more opportunities for themselves that would help as well yeah you saw Garrett a couple of times where he was dribbling downfield on his individual like a couple of those things were forced but him bringing it downfield against three players just opens Jacob and Fireburner to do whatever they want if you can have your anchor player the guy that normally sits back leading the charge and then allowing those other two to attack afterwards while he rotates back those are those opportunities that are going to come from it so um, I would like to see a little bit of individual play come out, but not in the sense where it breaks the entire rotation because mm -hmm. we saw what happens when it does. Yeah, well, both these teams in pretty solid spot in the overall standings. Energy a little bit higher at this point. Definitely looking forward to watching these two, te uh, these two teams play as the season continues. But we have one more match to go here on the stream for the North America broadcast, and it's a doozy. It's Cloud9 going up against FlyQuest. We saw both of these two teams in action earlier today, and they both looked pretty strong. So this should be an awesome match to close things out here here on twitch.tv slash rocket league today stay tuned we'll be right back